2017 CF 15684, State v. Nelson. Mr. Nelson, you're going to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give and be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please state your full name and date of birth. Thank you. Who's going to be doing the first witness this morning? I am. Ms. Burdick, is the state ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Who's doing a cross of that witness? Judge, I am. Ms. Moore, is the defense ready to proceed? Yes. Mr. Nelson, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's bring in the jury, please. Good morning, members of the jury. Good morning. Ms. Burdick, does the state acknowledge the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Moore, defense? Yes, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Burdick, please call the next witness for the state. Your Honor, the state calls Ed Zabler. Thank you. Dick Simon's word of testimony here about the give would be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and help you God. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Reporter. Thank you. Ms. Burdick. Good morning. Good morning. Please tell the court and the members of the jury how you look for it. I am currently employed with the City of Winter Park. I am a civilian employee where I am the property that is crime scene. How long have you worked for the City of Winter Park? 20 years. Have you been a Vehicle believed to uh, 
belonged to Jennifer Clifford had been recovered by the Winter Park Police Department in the jurisdiction of the city of Orlando, correct? Yes, ma'am. Did you go to that complex? I did not. Did you have contact with the vehicle that day? I did. Where did that take place? Uh, the vehicle was towed to the Winter Park Police Department vehicle bank, a secure facility where the department was stored. Uh, I arrived there about 3 o'clock in the evening. Um, was Lieutenant Wilkerson there? He was. Is, do you acknowledge that's the individual who had the vehicle towed and then maintained pending your arrival to uh, document? I'll sustain the objection. He, he was there with the vehicle, however, when you arrived? He is. He's my supervisor, and I answered directly to him, so he had probably to speak over the phone about the vehicle. What did you first do as it relates to the vehicle? The vehicle itself, the first thing I'm going to do is document its condition, uh, photograph the uh, complete outside of the condition of the vehicle. Right. Do you recall? Do you recall, or do your notes reflect whether or not the vehicle was unlocked upon the receipt of it? It was unlocked. Were the keys with the vehicle? It was not. Now you said that uh, you photographed the exterior of the vehicle first. I do. That's the first thing we do is document. I may approach the witness, Your Honor. I'll be something shown to counsel. Go ahead. With DT, DU, DV, and DW for identification. Okay. You would look at these without showing them at uh, this point to the jury and tell me if uh, those are photographs you took uh, in the afternoon on September 28th of 2017 of the uh, exterior of the vehicle. Just in there. And do these fairly and accurately reflect uh, that which you were trying to capture through the use of the dog? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce the reference letter to exhibits for identification and evidence. Okay. Oh, with that objection, the Items identified by Ms. Burdick on the record, both for identification, are admitted into evidence, starting with States Exhibit 103 and being consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. DT will be 103, DU will be 104, DV will be 105, and DW 106. Let me show you uh, 103 first on the monitor. Is this vehicle located in the bay at Point Park Police Department that you described uh, earlier during your there's a nice pointer there for your use if you need it. Um, you can only use it on the screen behind you, not the monitor. Um, describe what kind of vehicle this is. It's a Hyundai Santa Fe Sport uh, four-door model with hatchback. And the license plate, of course, of that vehicle is displayed here in the photograph. It is. Showing you on six in evidence, just a side view of the uh, tint on the windows, both on the uh, rear driver's side and uh, the back. On a five in evidence, showing the tint on the again on the back, now on the rear passenger side. Right. And one of three being the front of the vehicle. That's right. Since the 
uh, vehicle was received unlocked, uh, were you able to access the interior on that date? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's been marked as DS for identification. Is this the vehicle registration that was found inside the vehicle? It was. At this point, I would say to use the DS for identification and evidence. Without objection, what's been marked for identification as DS is admitted into evidence as States Exhibit 107. Mission published. Grant. All right, the vehicle registration for this um, vehicle with the license plate IKZ D52, a 2015 Hyundai Utility Gray. Vehicle. Uh, it's registered to Jennifer Lynn Fulford in Altamont. The uh, were you able to access the back portion uh, behind that hatch? I may approach the witness with what's been marked as DX. ER and ES for identification. Go ahead. And those photographs taken of the uh, interior of the vehicle and then uh, one of the items that's in the back there. And do they fairly and accurately show uh, what you had intended by the use of photography? Yes, ma'am. At this point, I would seek to introduce DX, ER, and ES for identification into evidence. Okay. That objection has been marked for identification, as stated by Ms. Burdick. Will be admitted into evidence starting with States Exhibit 108, consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. DX will be 108, ER will be 109. And ES will be 110. Permission to publish those, Charlie? Granted. Showing you 108 in evidence. Is this the uh, condition of the back of the vehicle once the hatch was open? At some point during your processing of the vehicle that day, did you remove the large item that appears in the center of the photograph? I did. How would you describe that item? Uh, it appears to be a comforter. It was bundled together. Uh, and it was packaged as is you see right now. Did you eventually uh, take it out of the package and uh, spread it out to its full size uh, to document? I did. The condition? I did. Is that what is shown in 109 in evidence? It is. And then uh, 109 appears to have some dark items on there. Sorry. I can overrule the objection until the question is finished, and if you have an objection, you can raise it. Are, is there a close up of those items shown in 110 in evidence? And how would you describe uh, the items in one text? Here to be the leaves on these other journals that were on the conference itself. There were uh, items under the comforter as well once it was removed. There was. I'm going to show you what's been marked as EQ. Four, four, are you good at here? Okay. 
the lights have been restored. It appears like everything is okay. Can I continue? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, let me now show you what's been introduced as 111 in evidence. One ten eight has a paper grocery bag on the right side. Is, is this a close up of that? It is. Area? Yes, ma'am. And in front of that um, paper bag that says Whole Foods Market on it, uh, is there an item there on the floor that you are documenting? It is. In this case, it was a pair of eyeglasses. I may approach the witness with what's been marked as DY, DZ, EA, EB, EC, ED, and EE for identification. Okay, go ahead. Take a look at this series of photographs and tell me if uh, those are taken by you on September 28th of 2017. They are my photos, ma'am, yes. And do they fairly depict the uh, driver's seat? and front passenger seat of the uh, Hyundai and some items that were located therein. That's correct. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce the record Leonard exhibits for identification into evidence. Without objection, what's been identified by Ms. Burdick for identification will be admitted in evidence, starting with State's Exhibit 113 and then consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. D Y would be one one three. D Z would be one one four. E A would be one one five. E B would be one one six. E C would be one one seven. ED would be 118, and EE would be 119. Showing you 113 in evidence. Describe for the jury what we're looking at. It's a picture from the driver's side looking into the vehicle as we're documenting the condition as we find it. Showing you 114. What are we looking at here? This is from the passenger side, same same deal. We're, what we're doing is photographing it so that you can see exactly what we're seeing when we first look inside that vehicle. In the center there is a, an armrest that is in the um, down or closed position. Is that the condition it was in when you opened the vehicle? It was. Did you open it? I did. Were there items inside? There was. Was one of the items uh, the bottle? It was. And did you uh, remove and collect that item? I did. And 116 is a photograph showing that item once it's removed from the box. That is correct. Was that, was that an open bottle? It was. Photograph 
It was a uh, towel that was located on the passenger side seat. And did you remove that item and collect it? I did. Showing you 117 in evidence. Is that the item? It is. It, did you just lift it out of the seat of the way that it appeared in the seat and then photograph it? I did. And then you spread that out so you could uh, see its length? That's correct. 118, one side of that towel. It is. And 114 in evidence on the passenger side floorboard, there appears to be uh, a tan object with some darker colored handles. How would you describe that object? Uh, it's, it was, when I looked at it completely, it's a Weekender bag. That is the name brand um, that was found on the passenger floorboard. Did you remove that bag from the passenger floorboard? I did. Were there items inside? Yes, ma'am. If, if I may approach the witness with what's been marked as EF, EG, EH, EI, EJ. EK, EL, and EM for identification. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am, they are. Do they fairly and accurately depict the condition of the bag and the items inside? They do. Without objection, what's been marked for identification stated by Ms. Burke will be admitted into evidence starting with State's Exhibit 120 and consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. EF would be 120, EG 121, EH 122, EI 123, EJ 125, EL 127. Push the publish. Granted. All right, show me 120 in evidence. Is that the bag? That is the bag. Finally, I appreciate what's been marked as. AB for identification. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you take a look at the exterior of the package that I placed in front of you and tell me if you recognize that as something that you've had contact with in the past? It is. And how do you recognize it? These are my markings. These are my initials on the tape seal uh, and my writing on the outside of the package. Did you describe on the exterior what you placed in the bag? I did. And what is that item? It's the tan weekender bag, uh, and it lists off some of the contents that it had. Now, at this point, I would seek to introduce A, B for identification. It's Alpha Bravo. Correct. Okay. 
What's been marked for identification is states A, B is admitted into evidence as, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Moore. Without objection, what's been marked for identification is states A, B is admitted into evidence as states exhibit 128. I, it's just as you see it there, so I'm assuming that it was closed. I'll show you 114 again. Yes, ma'am, it appears to be closed. So uh, when you unzip it, do you see uh, what is shown in 121 in evidence? I do. And how would you describe the item that we're looking at? Uh, on top, you can see a white and color towel. I did. Is that what we're looking at in 122? Yes, ma'am. And once you removed it and photographed it, what did you do with it? Repackaged it to uh, make it its own entry. I do. How do you know that? The tape seals are signed with my initials, and it's my writing on the outside. All right. uh, what item did you place in that bag prior to sealing it? This is the white and colored towel that contains multiple stains uh, removed from the weekender bag. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce the for identification into evidence. Without objection, what's been marked for identification is states B is admitted evidence as states exhibit one, two, nine. Let me show you 123 in evidence. Once the towel is removed, are there other items in the bag? There are. Is that what we're looking at in 123? Yes, ma'am. 124. Showing uh, that same item in the bag from a slightly different angle. It is. Did you remove that item? I did. And then is that the item that we're looking at in 125 in evidence? It is. How would you describe that item? Uh, like a type of white and colored t shirt. I may approach the witness who wants to mark the state's exhibit A for identification. Go ahead. What happened to that T-shirt after you photographed it? <coughs> uh, it would be placed into that bag that you have there. All right. Uh, if you would look at the exterior just to confirm that that is, in fact, the T-shirt that was placed in the bag by you and then sealed. It is. Without objection, what's been marked for identification is states A is admitted into evidence as states exhibit 130. collection, uh, there was also a watch inside the bag itself. Do you need to refresh your recollection on that or no? No, ma'am. I'm certain it's there. Uh, and what is the 
And did you remove the watch from the bag? I did. And what did you do with it once it was removed? Photographed it. Showing you 126 in the evidence. Is this that watch with the scale? It is. And 127 in evidence. Are you uh, taking a close up of the band of that watch near the, the holes or eyelets? I am. Uh, it's a cloth band, and it contained reddish-brown stains. What happened to that watch after you photographed it? I would have packaged it. Go ahead. You can take a look at that packaging and tell me if it is something that you've had contact with. In the past. It is. Okay. What is it? That is that watch. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce the state's own for identification into evidence. Without objection, it's been marked for identification as States O is admitted into evidence as States Exhibit 131. Yes, ma'am. What happened to that item after you photographed? It was packaged as well. Without objection, what's been marked for identification as States AA is admitted in evidence as States Exhibit 132. I may approach the witness with what's been marked as EN, as in Nancy, and EO for identification. Go ahead. <coughs> There was. How would you describe that item? It was a black and color wallet. Uh, do the photographs that I have uh, placed in front of you, EO and EN for identification, uh, fairly and accurately show uh, the wallet uh, where it was in the Santa Fe, and then uh, once it was opened, what the contents were? It was. It was located on the floorboard underneath the bank. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce E, N, and E, O for identification. Without objection, uh, what's been identified for identification by Ms. Burdick will be admitted in evidence, starting with States Exhibit 133, consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. E, N will be 133, and E, O will be 134. One three three. Is this the wallet located on the passenger side floorboard um, near the center column of the vehicle? It is. And one thirty four is the contents of the wallet uh, once it's opened. It is. Did the, did the contents include the driver's license of Jennifer? 
I'll overrule the objection. Yes, it does. After the uh, vehicle was uh, photographed, the evidence collected and otherwise processed, did the Winter Park Police Department retain possession of the vehicle? We did. Right. Uh, were you eventually provided with a set of keys to determine whether or not, in fact, uh, they were to either open, lock, or operate the vehicle? I was. Detective Wagner had recovered keys and asked me to check. I sustain the objection. You, you were asked at some point? Yes, I was. To, and were some keys provided to you by Detective Wagner with your agency? That's correct. What was the date that uh, those keys were provided? May I look at my report? Let's assume refreshing your recollection. Yes, ma'am, it will. May the witness do so, Your Honor. Go ahead. <coughs> On January eighth. 2018 at 1549 hours, uh, 349. If I may approach the witness, what's the marks of state? Why identification? Go ahead. Are the keys that were provided to you in that package? They are. Uh, first thing we're going to do is open the photo log and document the photo, uh, document the keys themselves. At which point we went ahead and tried it on the car. Right. By we, you mean? Uh, my and and Detective Sharon Wagner. Okay. Were you able to determine whether or not any of the keys uh, on that item uh, locked or unlocked the vehicle? It did. It operated the door, uh, the driver's door. All right. Now, um, once you collect and package all of the items uh, that we've been, as we've been talking about, what happens to them? Uh, they are stored in the Winter Park Evidence Unit. Uh, some are sent to the FDLE for further processing. Now, um, who makes the determination as to what collected evidence items are sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? In this case, we had meetings where we discussed forensically what was being found with the case detective, and we also brought in FDLE as well. Are you familiar um, with your time at the Winter Park Police Department? as a crime scene investigator with whether or not the Florida Department of Law Enforcement has submission, what are called submission guidelines? Yes, ma'am. What are those? Submission guidelines. I'll sustain the objection as to the truth of the matter asserted, but I'll overrule it to the extent it affects the uh, testimony of the listener. All right. Uh, you've had to operate under the rules and regulations of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement when you submit evidence items, whether it was this case or in other cases, correct? That's correct. All right. Um, so from your perspective, from what you recall, how is the submission process done? FDLE has certain guidelines that must be followed if you're going to submit items to them. So that's why you see all these separate packages because they'll only take certain items from those type of packaging. All right. uh, 
Now, if you collected 100 evidence items, for example, um, would you submit all 100 to FDLE? No, ma'am. All right, why not? They will only work your, your best evidence. You're gonna send your best evidence first. Uh, in this case, we took numerous swabs from that car, but in this case, we only specifically sent certain items that were related, our best evidence first. All right, uh, to include the uh, beer bottle. Yes, ma'am. Sustained. What did it include? Uh, in this case, uh, the beer bottle, the items from the weekender bag, the watch. Um, if you allow me to look at my notes, I'll give you specifics on everything. Let's just confine, uh, of the items that we just looked at in the photographs and uh, that are in the, the evidence bags, which of those items were sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for further testing? Uh, submission one was the beer bottle. Submission two, uh, buccal swabs, a ball cap. I'll sustain the objection, Ms. Burdick. You document in a report every item that is sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, correct? Yes, ma'am. When it was sent? Yes, ma'am. That's documented as well? Yes, ma'am. And that is done not just for record keeping purposes, but to assist you in refreshing your recollection about when and what was sent for further testing to the crime lab. Any objection to the form. Is that, why do you do it? Why do you write a report? Uh, so that we can keep track of all the evidence items. I'm holding over 18,000 pieces of evidence in my charge. All right. So in looking at the uh, document uh, regarding what evidence was submitted to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, does that refresh your recollection as it relates to the items that we've been discussing here this morning? as to which were submitted to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. It does. All right, can you tell us please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, items from the car that were removed, we sent as well. Uh, the t-shirt from the Weekender bag, the towel from the Weekender bag, the watch from the Weekender bag, um, swabs from different people that are involved so that we can rule them out. Um, the list goes on. Would when you say swabs, what are you talking about? In this case, we get elimination standards from people that may have touched something that are not involved. So if they need that to help them in their processing of DNA, they can do that. Did that include swabs from uh, Reed Berman? It did. All over the really objections. No, no response. Did I that really include objection. Robert Fulford? It did. Now, that vehicle processing that took place on the 28th, um, did you continue to process it through out the 28th and into the 29th? Multiple days, yes, ma'am. On September 30th, uh, were you notified that the remains of Jennifer Fulford had been recovered? Yes, ma'am. Was that within the jurisdiction, the location, within the jurisdiction of the Winter Park Police Department? It was not. Whose jurisdiction was that? The Orange County Sheriff's Office. Right. As a result of that, um, was the Orange County Sheriff's Office then the primary agency to um, process that scene? They were. Right. Were you allowed to assist them at all? I would say observe would be a better word. All right, so you observe. I did. And once they had concluded uh, their processing of that field, um, did you ever go back? Yes, ma'am, many times. All right. Uh, do you recall or do your uh, records reflect when you went back? Yes. All right. Uh, what was the first date that you would have returned after Orange County had finished their processing of the scene? 
Uh, may I recall my re recollect my notes? Will that assist you? Will your report assist you in refreshing your recollection as to the date? It will tell me the exact date. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, may the witness proceed? Ms. Moore, go ahead. October 6th of 2017. Okay. Would you have gone there on that date uh, alone or with other crime scene technicians? On the October 6th date, it was myself and Lieutenant Tim Volkerson. Okay. Um, did you have any uh, items with you to assist you? Yes, ma'am. Um, we brought metal detectors with us. All right. So what did you do at, this, at that location on... October 6th. Uh, the field where Ms. Fulford was recovered is uh, very high grass. At some point, some of this grass was over our heads. Uh, we did uh, numerous searches for many hours um, with metal detectors, visual exam, spiral searches, grid searches uh, with, with no luck. What's a spiral search? Spiral search is where you start at a different location and you work your way out. In this case, it was from the body. Uh, site and we worked our way around the scene. All right. What were you looking for? I was convinced that the murder weapon was. I'll sustain the objection. What were you looking for? The knife. Did you find it on October 6th? I did not. Okay. Did you eventually return on December 27th of 2017? May I verify the date to be accurate? You have that written down? I do. Right. Would reviewing that assist you in refreshing your recollection as to whether or not you went to the location on December 27th of 2017? It would. Your Honor, may the witness review his report? Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. December 27th at 0800 hours. 8 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. All right. At that time, did you have a larger group of individuals to assist you in searching that field? I did. All right. Did uh, the Winter Park Police Department have success in locating any items of um, potential evidentiary value on that date? We did. All right. What was recovered? We found a knife. If I may approach the witness with what have been marked as states exhibits E.T., E.U., E.V., E.W., E.X., E.Y., E.Z., F.A., F.B., F.C., and F.D. For identification. Go ahead. We'll take a look at that 
series of photographs and tell me if those were taken on December 28th of 2017 at the uh, location, I'm sorry, December 27th of 2017 at the uh, location on Fenton Street uh, where Ms. Fulford's body had been uh, recovered back in September. They are. Without objection, the exhibits identified by Ms. Burdick on the record for identification will be admitted into evidence, starting with State's Exhibit 135 and consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. E.T. would be 135. E.U. 136. E.V. 137. E.W. 138. E.X. 139. E.Y. 140. EZ 141, FA 142, FD 143, FB to publish. Granted. This is the field. What you're looking at here is a post where we marked where Miss Fulford was recovered. Does that have a yellow flag affixed to it? It does. Showing you 136 in evidence. This is that same field. I'll overrule the objection. It is. It's the same field. What you're looking at here is the marker marked with red uh, tape where the knife is found. I am. You're looking at where Miss Fulford was recovered and where the knife was found. And 138, a slightly closer version of the same. Just any of the form. What is that? This is where Mrs. Fulford was recovered. This is where the knife is found. Now looking from where Mrs. Fulford's body was recovered over to where the knife was located here. Could you take uh, close-up pictures of the knife in position before any other action was taken with the car to Yes, ma'am. Showing you one forty. <coughs> It is at the base of the stake here. 141. Is that the same positioning, just a little bit closer. And then I 
Again, getting a little bit closer to where the knife is located. I did. In this case, it's a scale to render size. Is that the position in which the knife was found, or did you put it in that position? No, ma'am. That's exactly how we found it. What happened to that object after you photographed it in place? Measured, documented, uh, rephotographed, and packaged. This is back in my laboratory where I'm taking photographs of the knife. And since that is a two-sided object, 144, is this the other side? It is. What happened to the knife after you photographed it back in your lab? Contacted FDLE, letting them know that we had found the knife and requested a rush submission. If I may approach the witness with what's been marked as AC for identification. Go ahead. <clears throat> Take a look at that evidence item and tell me if you recognize what's on the exterior packaging. I do. And what do you recognize it to be? This is my packaging of that knife. I submitted it to FDLE. Are you familiar with the markings of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Right. Do they appear on the package? I'll overrule the objection. Yes, ma'am. When we package as crime scene folks, we use blue tape. Sustain that objection. What happens when you package an item and send it to FDLE? Uh, they put their markings and their evidence tape on it as well. Do you recall or do your records reflect the distance between uh, that knife that was recovered and the location where Mrs. Fulford's remains were located. Yes, ma'am, they do. I have those. Uh, 75 feet, 8 inches. Now, you did not go to Jacksonville to assist in the execution of a search warrant at the Sunshine Inn, did you? I did not. Were uh, evidence items uh, brought to you after the execution of the search warrant? They were. If I may approach the witness with what's been marked as uh, states DR for identification. Go ahead. you recognize the packaging? I do. What do you recognize that to be? It's a wallet that was recovered by FDLE crime scene in Jacksonville. I'm sorry, could 
you read the question back. What do you recognize that to be? Answer it's a wallet that would be covered by FDLE crime scene Okay, I'll overrule the objection. That was given to you and you placed it in that package? Okay. Oh, sustain the objection to the form. Was that given to you and placed in the package by you? It was not. This was packaged by FDLE. So that's the way you received it? It is. All right. And then it's been, has it been maintained at the Hood Park Police Department evidence location? It has. I would seek to introduce DR for identification into evidence. And next slide. I'll sustain the objection. Your Honor,
Yes. Can you tell if you ever opened that item? Yes, ma'am, I have. All right. How can you tell that? Well, my evidence seals located on the packaging. Uh, it also reflects my initials, date, and time. Right. And uh, when you opened that, did you photograph any of the items inside? I did. If I may approach the witness. Yes. May, may I approach, I'm sorry, may I continue? Yes. May I approach the witness with what's been introduced as 44 in evidence? Yes. That is a uh, two-page composite. Can you tell me if you took those photographs? I did. Right. And uh, the photographs there, were, were those of an item inside that wallet? They were. Or inside that packaging that you opened? Yes, ma'am. Permission to publish your honor? Exhibit 44? Yes. Yes, go ahead. The uh, first page of the exhibit, how would you describe that item? It's a Lynx bus pass. Right. Is that a two sided item? Yes, ma'am. Did you photograph the reverse side? I did. Looking at the second page of the compartment. <coughs> Can you tell me if that is the reverse side of that bus pass? It is. Was this bus pass removed from the item inside that package uh, and then photographed in the condition you found it? It was. Cross examination? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to start with that last photograph that we were talking about, um, the bus pass. Is that the only item that you photographed from that particular piece of evidence? I believe so. It was a specific request for me to photograph items, uh, to find that and give that over to our detective bureau for further investigation. Okay. And so, um, that doesn't mean that was the only thing in the wallet. Correct. Okay. And so if there were other photographs taken by someone else, that would show the full contents of that wallet. If there was other photographs, it was not done by me. Okay. Um, so let's go back to um, your first involvement on September the 28th. And that, um, if I understood you correctly, was that you processed Mr. Berman's home first. I did. Okay. 
And when you were there, um, processing includes taking photographs, collecting evidence, um, swabbing things if necessary, right? That's correct. Okay, and when you did all of that, you saw no signs of forced entry, is that right? That's correct. Okay, and um, you were aware that prior to your you know, processing, that items of evidence had been moved or cleaned up around the house, is that right? That is correct. Okay. Um, and you did not find any suspected blood inside the home, is that right? I had swabbed a reddish brown stain that was marked as evidence marker one that later turned out not to be uh, blood. They believed that was a red wine stain. Okay. They do, yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, so then that same day you went to the vehicle bay, is that right? That's correct. Okay, and um, so that was the first location that you saw the vehicle, or the only location that you saw the vehicle. That's correct. So you didn't see it at Publix? I did not. And you didn't photograph it at Publix or anything like that? I did not. And you didn't collect any evidence from Publix at all? I never went to Publix. Okay. Um, and when you, it hadn't been like sealed with evidence tape or anything when you arrived at the vehicle bay, right? It was not sealed on purpose. Okay. And the, um, I think you indicated that at that time you did not have the keys. That's correct. And that sometime later, I believe you said January the 8th is when you were given keys, is that right? Without looking, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, the date you're just not 100% sure of, is that what you're saying? No, without double checking. Um, so going back to the 28th, you collected a lot of things from the vehicle that day, right? I did. And um, some of which we talked about, a lot of which we did not talk about, is that right? Very much so. Okay, and you did a lot of other things other than just photograph the vehicle, right? I did. You did all those same things we talked about with processing, swabbing it and collecting items, and you, you did some other more thorough evidence collection, right? Very much so. Okay, and so that included vacuuming, trace vacuuming to collect for hairs and fibers and things like that. It did. Okay, and you collected things from that trace vacuuming. I, yes. And um, none of those items were sent to FDLE. That That's right? correct. And you also took swabs of things that you thought might have DNA value. Is that right? I did. And none of those things were sent to FDLE either, right? That's correct. Um, the, I wanted to ask you about some of the photographs you took that day. Did you, how many different days did you photograph the vehicle or items in the vehicle? Do you know? I had that vehicle for a very long time and I did a lot of processing. It was over multiple days. Okay. And um, specifically, you originally just photographed the comforter sort of crumpled up in the back of the, the car, right? As is, yes ma'am. And then I believe you testified that at a later date, you went back and photographed it all spread out. I did. And in the time in between that, you had collected it and put it in like an evidence bag? Yes. Okay, so then you had to un or take it out of the evidence bag and lay it all out. I did. And um, do you remember when you did that? I do. When was that? Yesterday. Yesterday? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Judge, may I just have one moment? Yes. Judge, can we approach, please? Yes. All right, members of the jury, in just a moment, we're going to take a brief recess. During the recess, you're going to continue to leave your notepads and your pens here. During the recess, you're under all the court's instructions, including but not limited to the instruction not to discuss this case amongst yourselves with anyone else. Please follow the deputy in the jury room. We'll bring you back as quickly as we can. Thank you. All right, we're going to be in a brief recess. Well, we're going to take our break is what I mean, and then we'll come back.